Hello and welcome back to Bossing ASMR with Mr. F. No only kidding, any ASMR in this video is purely incidental. Um, this is Bossing English with Mr. F. Uh, we're going to be looking at GCSE Unseen Poetry. Some of you have mocks coming up, so useful to have a quick refresher of this with a fresh poem that maybe you've never seen before, how we approach it. So I'll give you some clues and a terrible acronym that may help you. Um, there we are. So midterm break um, was the poem. Here we're dealing with AO1, AO2. Nobody expects you to know anything about Seamus Heaney. Of course you do because uh, he's on the poetry anthology, but you know, nobody expects you. And even if you did, you wouldn't get any credit for it. So don't think about that. Think about language structure form uh, and the question which will be directing your way of viewing the poem it will be guiding you to look at it in a specific way uh, and that will help you with your conceptualized hopefully brilliantly coherent critical analysis midterm break i sat all morning in the college sick bay counting bells knelling classes to a close at two o'clock our neighbors drove me home in the porch i met my father crying he had always taken funerals in his stride and big Jim Evans saying it was a hard blow. The baby cooed and laughed and rocked the pram when I came in, and I was embarrassed by old men standing up to shake my hand and tell me they were sorry for my trouble. Whispers informed strangers I was the eldest, away at school, as my mother held my hand in hers and coughed out angry, tearless sighs. At ten o'clock the ambulance arrived with the corpse, staunched and bandaged by the nurses. Next morning, I went up into the room. Snowdrops and candles soothed the bedside. I saw him for the first time in six weeks, paler now, wearing a poppy bruise on his left temple. He lay in the four-foot box as in his cot. No gaudy scars, the bumper knocked him clear. A four-foot box, a foot for every year. Okay, so there are some things that jump out at me immediately just from a quick reading there, and I'll tell you what they are. The most obvious thing uh, that I would you know, be looking at, and we will go through this list on the right here in a minute, is this, right? That is the most obvious thing, isn't it? We have uh, all these regular stanzas, three lines, and all of a sudden we have one uh, stanza that's irregular, and this maybe symbolizes a life-changing event. So maybe... We can start by saying these regular three-line stanzas could equate to the regularity of life. And then here, a four-foot box, a foot for every year, that one line shows a life-changing event. Something irregular has happened to uh, the speaker, the persona of this poem. Now, the genius of this poem, and it really is uh, genius. Sorry, I'll, I'll just quickly pull out a... F no, let's, let's focus on... Um, Let's focus on the most interesting thing that happens, which is this. Um, we get this idea, the bumper knocked him clear. We understand that the younger brother of the speaker has died. When you know, This is a memory of grief. This is a poem all about grief. This is a, a kind of reliving of the grief and the moment, the funeral and um, what happened. Um, and the poem very cleverly replicates what happens. The bumper knocked him clear, so it was a car accident. And here, by having this gap between the bumper knocked him clear, a four foot box a foot every year, we get this kind of replication of, the, of that bump, of that knock uh, there. Um, so we can almost like textually visualize what's happened. Uh, and maybe this is a trauma for the speaker that has to be shown in this way, but there's something, that, I mean, that to me just immediately jumps out at me as a visual imitation of the life-changing event poetically in the structure of the poem. So I think that's quite a clever thing you could look at there. Um, what is it about? So we've talked about it. Uh, so we're going to start with this um, terrible an acronym, A-T-I-S-E-L-D-S, Ati Selds. It's awful, isn't it? And that will be about title, important features, whether words or tones, the start and end, and we've 
the language, any language devices, and then a quick summary of you know what the, this poet and the, is trying to do and, and what is happening in this poem, kind of linking back to it. So what's it about? Well, the question will probably talk about grief or you know memory or trauma or something here if there was a question so we would be directed into that now one of the things with this and with the other poetry questions is multiple meanings right so the one of the things i used to say to students was could is one of the most useful words in your arsenal because um if you can say it could be this or it could be that, you're kind of hitting that alternative interpretations, level five, level six on the mark scheme. So never just assume there's one way to read a poem or one way to answer this question or one way to interpret a word. Uh, here, I might interpret this in a number of ways. I might say it's um, an attempt to come to terms with the grief by visually representing it, uh, a, a kind of maybe unconscious gesture on, you know, you, you could explore that in multiple ways. Helpfully, the title, which is the next part of an acronym, can also be a, a really useful key to uh, understanding poems. So midterm break, clearly we know the child has been away at school. I'll try and unify this a little bit. Um, the eldest here, wait, where does it say that? Um, da, 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 da. Uh, away at school, i.e. away at school when it happened, when, when the brother died. And that's where we have that six-week gap for the first time in six weeks. That's why he hasn't seen him. So the speaker has been away at boarding school. So he's maybe home for half term. The midterm break might be a literal school holiday. And it just so happens that the funeral takes place there. But obviously break here can be interpreted in multiple ways. Um, something has broken his family is broken by this uh, life-changing event, the trauma of the, of the younger brother's death. So there, that title is opening up multiple ways of reading this poem in terms of breakages uh, in different ways. Most important features, words or tones. Well, I'm just going to pull out a few that jumped out at me. Uh, one of the things that I noticed was there was this kind of foreshadowing of the hard blow in the second stanza that comes at the at the end there. So those two are kind of linked, aren't they? Uh, and what's really interesting here is that hard blow is juxtaposed uh, with something soft. The baby cooed and laughed and rocked the pram. There we have an eight, um, a polysynthetic list. Polysynthetic just means this little list of cooed, um, what's that? laughed and rocked. Um, it's, the list is joined together with and. Uh, and we get this weird juxtaposition of uh, the foreshadowing of the death that comes later, something hard and um, damaging, next to this soft, um, gentle image of infancy. It just happens to be a baby at the funeral. So there's an interesting juxtaposition there uh, of life, of death and life, isn't there? So, you know, in the midst of life, we are in death. And maybe there's that kind of biblical idea being repeated there. Uh, okay, um, the mother's reaction, this is a poem about grief, is interesting. Uh, here, I might change the colour there. Uh, coughed out, angry, tearless sigh. So you could definitely attack that as a bit of language um, analysis there. Angry, tearless sigh, so it's chock full of emotion, but maybe confused emotion where this kind of different emotions are being mixed up. Um, something else I thought was quite interesting was the, uh, the suddenly that like the dropping in it. Sometimes some of the language, if we're looking at this, like things that jump out of us, the corpse again, that's that foreshadowing that we get with the hard blow there. Um, it jumps out at you because it's violent, isn't it? It's an unexpected word when we've had, we know we're dealing with death. We've got funerals and we've got a father crying, but corpse suddenly makes it seem quite, um, brutal doesn't it? it 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 jumps out at us in an unexpected way um we get a kind of semantic field maybe um here of snowdrops uh candles you know of, of images and, and and white things to do with kind of pale and we might link being pale with death um what i thought was interesting that was the thing i was going to say was the fact that there's a kind of reminiscence for the 
older brother, who's the speaker of the poem, the I, uh, he lay in the four foot box as in his cot. And that's, a, for me, one of the most poignant lines because the older brother looking down at his four year old younger brother dead in his cot is like he used to look at him when he lay, sorry, sorry, in his coffin, is like he used to look at him when he lay in his cot. And there's that kind of looking down as an older brother on someone who had lived in his cot and who was now dead unexpectedly in this coffin. And I just think that kind of mirroring of experience there is really very poignant. Um, but then the final line itself is very poignant, isn't it? Um, a four foot box, that repetition, uh, a foot for every year, just to point out the age, the most poignant fact of all is how young the child was when he died. Um, so I've talked most important features. Well, for me, maybe if my three might be this juxtaposition of life and death, or maybe some of the things happening at the end there. Between the, the start and the end, is there any significant change? Well, the things I was saying at the start about the replication of the event itself would be that for me. Language devices would be, um, I'll just get the colours right here. I'd, I'd probably attack that. Uh, I'd probably attack this semantic field uh, of white that I might link with death and grief in a way. Um, and that would be it. I probably would have done enough by uh, looking at those different things. Um, hopefully from doing that, you can see that sometimes something just jumps out at you. And the first thing that jumped out at me was the regularity of the stanzas and the irregularity of the ending. And there was something very, that's the most profound thing that's happening there, isn't it, structurally? And that'd probably be my way into the poem. And then I might zoom in on those individual language devices or features or changes of tone, like the, the corpse. The use of the word corpse changes the tone of the poem. Uh, we, we keep getting drip fed the idea that something monumental has happened, the father crying, um, you know, the, the whispers uh, here, um, the, the eldest, you know, brother. So it's we're dealing with family, grief. There we are. So you would be directed by the question. You'd want to get the word could in there to show that there are multiple ways to read things like the word break in the title. The title is always useful as a way to open up the poem if it's a difficult poem. Usually unseen poems are never difficult. They're always quite straightforward to give you a chance to go at them. That said, sometimes they can appear simplistic and saying something more um, conceptualised or higher level um, can be challenging because of that. So hopefully there'd be some uh, semantic fields or you know clever metaphors, paradoxes, oxymorons that you could tackle in your language analysis. Uh, or, like this, a very obvious structural feature. I mean, there are things I haven't said, I haven't talked about end stopping with the uh, dashes at the end there in, in the second stanza. There's more to go at than I've said here, but I just wanted to kind of talk you through the things that jumped out at me with this poem and this terrible acronym, Atticelds, that maybe have helped to you as a way of kind of focusing your attention uh, and kind of working through a poem in exam conditions. That's it, that's all we've got uh, for this edition of ASMR Bossing English. Um, I've got a cup of tea waiting for me here that I'm desperate to slurp like I did at the beginning. Smash that subscribe button, do something lovely to the like button, and I will be back with more Felicity Anon. Bye for now.